Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. What is it about the celebrity condition that makes some of these people lack just a basic level of sincere humanity? You know, they're constantly talking about how conservatives lack a basic level of empathy and compassion, but what I'm really tending to notice is that the conservative view is not a lack of compassion, but rather just a more macro view that takes into account everybody, doesn't treat specific people as needy or special, giving extra privilege to specific specific individuals, it's more so the view of equal opportunity for everybody, rather than picking winners and losers, where the Democrats seem to only show compassion and care towards people that they can use to further their own political ambition, or that they can use to virtue signal and make it seem as if they're just better people. They're always hyper-focused on specific groups that they pretend to cater to, but really it just seems like some sort of twisted game that in the end doesn't benefit the people they pretend to advocate for, but rather themselves. In sense, what I'm trying to say is that they're not actually compassionate whatsoever, but rather, they're manipulative and dishonest. And no one is more manipulative and dishonest, and frankly, vile, at least if we're talking about Hollywood celebrities, than of course, Seth Rogen, who once again proved that he is an absolute clown, who doesn't truly stand for anything or anyone, except for his own public image and the Twitter persona that he's created around himself. The caring, compassionate leftist, who pretends to be an advocate, is actually just a terrible person using the plight of others to sustain his dying career and to grab more of that illustrious Twitter clout. Let me show you guys exactly what happened here as Seth Rogen gets absolutely blasted for another terrible political take. But before we get into any of it, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, share the video as much as possible. We are still shadow banned by the YouTube algorithm hidden from non-subscribed viewers. With that out of the way, let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so just take a look at this. Seth Rogen roasted for urging people to get used to big city crime and break-ins. Comedian Seth Rogen faced a wave of ridicule on Wednesday after urging residents to normalize crime in big cities such as Los Angeles. And just take a look at this interaction right over here. Casey Neistat tweeted, and if you guys aren't aware who Casey Neistat is, he's the guy who made this video from 2016 essentially urging people to vote for Hillary Clinton. I'm voting for Hillary because, make no mistake, there is only one person that can defeat him. One person that can keep him away from power, and it is her. And so we're not talking about a right winger whatsoever. We're talking about somebody who sits firmly on the left, but he wrote, our car got robbed this morning because Los Angeles is a crime-riddled, third-world asshole of a city, but tremendous appreciation and gratitude to the hard-working officers at LAPD West LA, who not only arrested the mf -er, but they got all of our stolen goods back. Then Seth Rogen responds with, Dude, I lived here for 20 years. You're nuts. Ha ha ha. It's lovely here. Don't leave anything valuable in it. It's called living in a big city. To which then Casey Neistat responds, I can still be mad though, right? Feels so violated. You can be mad, but I guess I don't personally view my car as an extension of myself, man. You can be mad, but I guess I don't personally view my car as an extension of myself, man. Like just material goods and stuff, bro. And I've never really felt violated any of the 15 or so times my car was broken into. Once a guy accidentally left a cool knife in my car, so if it keeps happening, you might get a little treat. And what an absolute clown. If you don't like crime, then don't live in a big city. And then responds with, my car has been broken into 15 or so times. Just get used to it, bro. Don't get so attached to your material goods. Someone might leave you a knife in your car and you'll get a little treat. I mean, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. And this is someone that leftists look up to. This is a massive figure of the left on Twitter, if you guys aren't aware. He's cultivated this entire persona on Twitter, essentially launching ad hominem and vile attacks towards right-wingers, essentially acting like an edgy 13-year-old, a true man-child who has never grown up, an individual who has seemingly nothing to offer himself, so he's defined his entire personality around the concept of smoking cannabis, again, something you'd see a teenager do, which they would eventually, at least in most cases, grow out of and become an actual adult. But these pseudo-intellectual leftists, who have this self-righteous aura of just being better people than you, have these ridiculously idealistic takes, these unrealistic takes, that if you live in a big city, well, you just gotta deal with bad policy and extreme, and I mean extreme extreme heightened levels of crime. This isn't compassion. It's incompetence. It's stupid. You're not compassionate. If your worldview is, oh, just deal with it, bro, you might get a knife in your car after your car's been broken into 15 times. You're not compassionate if you have a blatant disregard for honest, hardworking people who are being victimized in your city to an unbelievable
unbelievable extent. I mean, just take a look at this little segment on how small business owners feel in California. How often do people come in and create problems in the store? Every day. Every single day. Is shoplifting an issue? No, yeah. They decriminalize petty theft in California. So it happens every few minutes. Literally in our store, probably 15, 20 times a day. 20 times a day? Oh, yeah. How much do you pay in taxes a year? Huh. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, I, I, it's a lot. Why are you still in San Francisco with experiences like that? Well, because you make investments in businesses and your homes and you buy property and you can't just pick up and leave. The man accosting us outside was blocking the store's entrance. Then you have angry people across the street who can't afford it because they're living in poverty. Whose fault is that? You know, I, I, I'm scared for my safety. And this is my perspective and it always has been. I truly don't understand compassion towards criminals, especially at the expense of hard-working, law-abiding, tax-paying citizens. But this increasingly seems to be the perspective of the left. Just deal with it. Let people out of jail. Don't enforce laws. Life and society will just magically turn into a utopia. As Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said, abolish the police and life will just turn into one big suburb. I mean, it's completely idiotic. And they continue to prove the point that I have been making forever. They are not truly compassionate. They merely use the concept of compassion in very targeted instances to gain some sort of moral superiority, some sort of power to gain fame. It's a selfish, manipulative act. And maybe that's why actors and actresses are so good at it, because they're literally paid to be fake. I mean, the utter hypocrisy of this Seth Rogen character. I'm with the little guy, man. Self-proclaimed socialist. I'd even probably go as far to call him a Marxist, at least in name. It's probably the ideology that he best identifies with in terms of what he puts out into the world, or what he puts on his Twitter feed. But in reality, the guy just started a company where he sells little ashtrays and stuff for like $500, selling overpriced crap to rich trust fund stoners as he lives in his private gated community with 20 four hour surveillance and security, mingling with Hollywood stars going to five star restaurants as he tweets to the little guys, the peasants, will just deal with crime. It's part of living in a big city. I don't know about that. I've been living in a big city my whole life and I've traveled to many big cities and lived there for extended periods of time. I have never, never in my life seen anything like what I experienced when I was in California. You know, there's a couple places that I just don't want to go to anymore. One of them is Chicago. One of them is Mexico. Another is the Middle East. And added to that list is Los Angeles and the Bay Area. Because I don't think it's normal to normalize crime, normalize break-ins, normalize homelessness, and blatant drug use on the streets in front of children. I don't think that's normal. I don't think it's just part of being in a big city, bro. And it just adds on and piles on to the point that I always make. Not the point that I was mentioning earlier about compassion when it comes to liberals, but the fact that all the problems that they virtue signal about, all the things that they pretend to care about, are more prevalent in Democrat strongholds than they are anywhere else. We're being lectured about wealth inequality by these absolute buffoons who live in their private communities, hanging with Hollywood big shots and billionaire CEOs, while people on the other side of the neighborhood are starving and suffering on the streets. They talk about exploitation, when their city centers are the mecca of exploitation, whether it comes to their blatant abuse of cheap labor, or the fact that Washington, D.C. and California are probably the two biggest hubs of human smuggling and human trafficking in the Western world. They talk about homelessness and the housing crisis, when once again, for the most part, it mainly exists where they are, they blah blah blah, non-stop virtue signal, using all of the people and all of the suffering that they've created in their cities to make themselves seem as if they're morally superior. They're not. In fact, it seems as though they lack a generic moral compass in totality. And while most of them are pretty slick about it, Seth Rogen lacks the finesse and essentially exposes himself for the disingenuous twat that he really is. He fits right in the same column him as Jenk's nephew Hassan and Ethan Klein from H3H3. And I don't know how anyone, and I mean anyone, buys their grift. It's absolutely unbelievable. That's what I got for you guys, though. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, share it as much as possible. We are still shadow banned by the YouTube algorithm hidden from non-subscribed viewers. Now I gotta get back to work, though. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.